Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, it's kind of a more casual review video. I'm going to be playing around with the ABH Norvina Volume 1 palette. I'm doing a couple looks with this, just talking about how I feel about the palette. So if you are interested in seeing that, then just keep watching. So I'm not going to talk too, too much about the details of this palette because this has been out for a few weeks now. So many people have done videos on it. I ordered this when it came out at Sephora. I was hesitant about picking this up because the color scheme is just not something I will be using very often. But of course, I love to give you guys my thoughts on new products that are releasing. So it is a little bit late, but I just, I've had so much fun with this palette that I really am excited to bring you this video. So I'm bringing you two different looks. One look that I created the other day you guys asked for a tutorial when I posted it on my Instagram so that's in this video and then of course on this look which I think is my favorite of the two super fast details about this palette it is $60 it's available right now Sephora Ulta and the ABH website and it is an array of 25 very crazy shades if you ask me not very neutral at all there's maybe three or four neutral shades in here but the rest are basically bright colors that Norvina likes I suppose uh, Norvina is is the owner of Anastasia so I do want to mention some things right now about the palette that this is not for everybody I don't think there is a huge market for people that are actually going to use this it's completely different from her regular palette so if you don't wear color you're not going to use this and it is going to be a waste of your money for somebody like me who is a collector and I do like to create fun looks for you guys and for my Instagram even I would say this palette really isn't for me it took me a while to decide on purchasing it and I ultimately decided to too, and I'm not gonna lie, I am happy that I purchased it. For the most part, this video is gonna be about the pros, but I do wanna name some cons right now. I don't really like the color story of this. I feel like it wasn't super well thought out. So many other ABH palettes, you can tell there's so much thought and love put into the color story. This one, kind of random if you ask me. You have a big like purple section up here and then a warmer, weird section down here. I don't know. There's just not a flow to this palette, I feel like, and they're kind of all jumbled in random places if you ask me. So for that, I I feel like it's just it's not a well thought out story just to my naked eye and then not only that while playing I did also feel like some of the shades were a little bit too close to each other so for example there was no need for all of these matte purples like no need you could barely tell the difference on your eyes along with like these two I felt looked very similar and there's just so many shades in here that are so close that if you put them next to each other, you almost can't tell the difference. For this being like a pressed pigment kind of palette, you'll see in this video how well they blended, how pigmented they were, and how much I really was loving it. Even though I'm not a huge, huge fan of the color story, I created some beautiful looks in this video. Now that I've dug into it more, I feel more and more inspired by this palette. I like it. I think it's a nice palette. If this color story interests you and you feel like this is something you'll get use out of, I think you'll really like it. So I'm just going to take you into the first look that I did where I was just playing around with it for the first time. So here you go. So I started off with the ABH eye primer because I'm figuring this is what's going to go best with these shadows. I'm going to start off with the shade B1 right here and I'm just going to start off with that as my inner third color. So I'm just using this random Morphe Y17 brush and I'm just patting it on. As you can see, super pigmented. Like it's not very often that you come across a color that just deposits so much color with a blending brush. So you really just want to focus the color kind of right in this inner third. So the next shade I'm going into is A2 right here. And I'm using a Wayne Goss number 18 brush. And we're going to move that on over to the next level. And as you can see, I'm not shying away from having this on my lid. It's fine. So don't worry about such an accurate placement. But definitely make sure you keep the top part blended. Again, super duper pigmented. We're going to deepen this up with a three right here. This is the Wayne Goss 17 brush. So next we're going in with B4 right here because I wanted to add more of that deep purple look because as you can see, these colors are quite pink. So this shade is really good for deepening it up and adding that true blue purple element in. This is a Wayne Goss number 20 brush, by the way. 
Okay, so the next shade I'm taking is this shade right here, D2. Now, I tried this with a brush. It didn't really work. This shade works best with the finger. I don't think it's the best quality. I feel like you would need to use a glitter glue underneath this to really make it work because I do have to kind of press it and work it into the skin, but it is a gorgeous color, so that kind of makes up for it. So I'm going to take that dark purple brush that I used, and I'm just going to use that to kind of integrate the colors together. Finally, for the top part of the eye, I'm taking the shade B3 right here, and that's going right in my inner corner. This shade is definitely good to use with a brush, so this shade is stunning. It's one of my favorites in this palette. So I'm going to finish the rest of my face makeup and I will be right so back. So let's work on the lower lash line. So I did want to bring a little bit of a different element in, some blue in, really just to play with more colors. So I did choose D4, which is this navy color. I'm very picky about my navies and this one's not bad at all. So I'm gonna take it on just a little pointer brush and I'm going to lightly run it along my lower lash line. I'm not going down too far. I'm keeping it pretty close to the lash line. And that's going all the way. So this navy worked really well for this purpose. I'm very picky about my navies. I can't really tell how this one would do if I use it on the actual lid. But just as an accent color, it did work really well. And I'm going to go back and take some of B1 right here on a small brush. And then I'm just going to run that right underneath the blue to kind of bring back some purple into the look so it's not just randomly pink and purple up here and then blue down there. I feel like an electric blue would have gone great in this palette though. She just has a navy. So just right underneath, not going too far out. And then the last color I'm taking for this look is A1 right here and I'm going to put that as my inner corner. I'm going to finish the rest of my face and I will be right back. So I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. Now for this next tutorial, I want to take you into how I got this look today. I wanted to play with more of the warmer colors at the bottom and this is one of my favorite looks that I've created recently. So I'm very excited for you guys to see this one. I'm so excited to how this look is going to turn out. I have a really good feeling about it. So the first color I'm starting off with is D1 right here. So this is kind of, it's a yellow, but it's not a super bright yellow but once you build it up it can pack a little bit of a punch nothing crazy and i'm just using my esum g34 to apply that to the inner part of my crease so as you can see it's really about that fade so i'm going into the shade e2 right here which is an orange and this is just a random luxie brush that i have and i'm gonna start building this crease so kind of work that into the yellow I'm rubbing my brush against a towel so that I can work on blending now and not applying more color. Now I'm taking a smaller brush. This is the Morphe M507 and I'm taking E4 right here which is a really bright hot red orange and I'm going to apply that right here just a touch to lead into the red shade. Same thing cleaning off my brush a little bit before I blend super pigmented color. Very impressed with this. And I don't know if you can see now that the orange and yellow are starting to fade as we blend more. We will touch up on that, but just something to be noted. And then the last color on my crease that I'm going in with right now is D3, which is a brighter cherry raspberry red. And honestly, I feel like the difference between this shade and the neon shade that I used before this isn't that big. And I find that with this palette, some of the shades are just a little bit too close to each other. I feel like you could have added a little bit more variety into this palette. Not you, but <laughs> Norvina could have added a little bit more into the palette because the colors are almost too close. So it could have been more of a diverse palette if she went a little bit further in the color differences. So now I'm starting to build right on top. And as you can see, that neon is just so pigmented. I'm just rebuilding all of the colors to make them pop. So now I'm taking the ABH eye primer, which by the way is what I started off with as well and ignore my zit. All the zits on my forehead are like monstrous. Ugh. 
And for cut creases, I use this Anastasia brush that the paint came off of, so I don't know the number. I will look it up for you. And I'm going to do a cut crease. I went all the way on this eye, but that's not really necessary because I decided to blend that edge out. But definitely for like three quarters of the lid, we want that cut crease. So the way that I do cut creases, you just kind of take it and you blink up because you want to have the cut crease at the very least where your eye is going to touch your crease. Otherwise, it's going to smear and smudge and lose that definition. So that is the bare minimum you should be doing and then I normally just raise it a little bit higher. Now, cut creases are not a regular thing for me. I never do them, and I especially never wear them out. But I do like it when I'm feeling a little bit more artistic. So I'm taking the shade C2 right here, which is kind of a shimmery, glittery yellow. And I'm going to apply that right where the yellow eyeshadow is for the matte color. One thing that is banging in this palette are the shimmers. I think the shimmers in here are killer they're so pretty so the next shade i'm taking is e1 and in here it kind of looks like a creamsicle orange type of color but really it has a very strong golden shift so it actually goes with the yellow very well and when the light hits it it almost looks like most of your eyelid is yellow when it has actually a touch of that orange color to it so they are very complementary to each other i was kind of hoping this shade was a bit more actually orange just to go with the vibe i was hoping for but no, these colors still look really nice together. And I'm going to use a brush to get those edges. And then for the last shade, I wanted more of a reddish shimmery shade, but the closest thing is C3 right here. It's a little bit more of a pinky cranberry color, but it actually looks way better than I thought it would. I'm just going to put that right in the outer part of the eyelid. Now this particular shade I noticed is like a touch chunky and has some fallout so just be aware of that it is so pretty as you can see just now we can blend this edge a little bit obviously i'm not going to leave it like this i'm going to clean it up but i want them both to be even so i'm just going to over blend both sides so that i can take a wipe to them i'm just taking a bit of a makeup wipe and we're gonna kind of clean that up and the reason why i like blending the shadow out first is so that the line isn't so harsh when you kind of clean it away because if it was like a really heavy layer of eyeshadow the cut would be way too sharp so i'm gonna finish the rest of my face makeup and i will be right back okay so i did my lower lash line here because i wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna turn out terrible the color i went into was c4 right here i did kind of want to carry over what i did on top to the bottom but i also just wanted to play with more colors so that's what i decided to do so i'm just putting this on the outer third of my outer corner this is a refer po7 e brush and then i'm taking the a5 which is a hot hot pink and that's going in the center of my lower lash line this is a wayne goss number 20. both of these brushes are very very similar Okay, the last shadow I used is actually not from the Norvina palette, but it is from the Aurora palette. This highlighting palette, I always try and give away because I'm like, oh, I never use it. And then I swear, it comes in handy every now and then for looks like these. And I'm just kind of blending that out here. It has like an orangey, pinky kind of duochrome to it, which is very pretty for the look. This is all we have for the eyeshadow. So I'm going to go off camera, finish the look, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, so here we are. Here is the final look. So even though this review is late, I still definitely wanted to play with it and give you guys a full opinion just because it is such a large palette. I did take my sweet time getting to know it and overall, I do really, really like this palette. I don't think the color story is very well thought out, but I really enjoy the quality of the palette. I think the shimmer shades in here are absolutely stunning. The mattes are super pigmented and even though these are like pressed pigments, this is the first pressed pigment formula that I did not have any trouble with. They blended beautiful like a regular eyeshadow and super duper pigmented which is incredible. So I really love the quality of this palette. Obviously this palette is not for everybody. In fact, I don't think it's for most people. But you know what? If you love makeup as an art and you love creating 
looks with color and playing around I think you will love this if you are the everyday work woman who wears neutrals every day obviously don't waste your money on this but you know as somebody who loves creating looks for you guys and Instagram and letting you know what's what with what's new I will admit I like this palette obviously some things I would tweak I can't deny the quality so that is all I have for today's video I hope you enjoyed the two looks that I came up with that's all I have for today's video if you did pick up this palette comment down below let me know how it worked for you your skin tone your age all of that good stuff the type of looks you like to create comment all that down below and let me know how this palette worked for you and I will see you guys in the next video bye guys have a good one